Hey, Juwan, you said after the past few games, you've been much happier with the defense. I guess, can you kind of pinpoint why the improvement has occurred now? Is it effort? Is it just getting more comfortable? Anything like that? Uh, there have been improvements, not just now, but uh, you know, just throughout the season. Um, you know, there, there are stretches when you have through your season where um, mistakes are made and you feel that, you know, as a group, you you have areas you want to you know, improve and in order to improve on other areas, you have to work on it. And with those, with that time of work, uh, it become habits. Uh, and that's where we're developing habits. So um, I just love, you know, our guys are really dialed in to just want to come in the gym and improve. We try to uh, become a, a, a dominant team on a defensive end. Coach, we move over, move over to Jamal Spencer from WZZM TV in Grand Rapids. Coach, professionally, in your opinion, when you look at the film and you look at what Keegan Murray's been able to do this season, you know, what do you see from him that makes him such an effective threat, such an effective scorer? Uh, first, we start with confidence. Um, you know, I feel his confidence level has definitely risen from last season. Uh, he's also gotten a lot of comfortable. Um, now that you know guys like Wise Camp, um, Garza, uh, those two guys were particularly the, the two that provided a lot of the scoring or the majority of the scoring for their team. And uh, with Keegan, you see it last season where he, he has the tools uh, offensively, uh, understanding how to play the game. Um, never was one of the guys that I saw that try to, you know, go outside of, you know, the offense to try to get his numbers. And so now this year, um, you know, a lot of offensive load is on his shoulders and he's accepted that responsibility uh, by putting in the work, you know, from the experience he received last year of getting playing time and now over the summertime and uh, with all the player development that I'm sure that he's probably been involved with, with within the program, you can see that, um, in games, you know, he just looks so comfortable out there. And he's been able to score on the outside of the floor from, or as well as in the inside. And then, you know, give him credit, you know, he's comfortable putting the ball on the floor, creating his own shot. Coach, will slide over to uh, Michael Cohen with the free press. Hey, Joan, good morning. Um, I was just curious, you know, what the uh, the review process was like looking at the film from the Ohio State game with with Musa, and, and did he feel like there were a lot of places for him to to grow when you look back at the film? Uh, no, you're a freshman, so there's always areas for you to grow. Um, and with Musa, with his attitude and mentality, you know, he comes in with that, you know, th that disposition of, hey, uh, you know, how can I get better? Coach, you know, I like to watch film. Um, I want to get more shots up. You know, he's the one that you try, you got to lock the doors um, to keep him out of the gym because you know he he has that that attitude that I just spoke about with Keegan. You know, he wants to improve and and uh, he wants to be an elite level player, but he understands it takes work, and that's what makes Musa special. Did you find a way to lock the doors, like you told us you were going to try? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did on Sunday. I had help doing it. And then I asked the question yesterday, who who still tried to come in here? And there were one or two players that still tried to come in, but uh, they knew that that was not allowed. They need to get away. Man, that, that's your baby boy, boy or girl? Baby boy, six months old and giving me a handful every day. Man, congratulations, <laughs> brother. Thank you, What's man. his name? His name is Joel. Joel. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Joe? He is name. Look at him. He looking. What's up, Joe? <laughs> oh man. Hey, enjoy, it, bro. We'll do, man. Thank you. Thank you. Once they get mine's age, man, you know you don't want to give them back. <laughs> <I'm just joking. laughs> Beautiful, man. Congrats. Thank you. Coach, we'll move over to uh, Nick Stoll from the Michigan Daily. Hey, Juwan. Uh, Iowa is a pretty quick pace of play, uh, second most average possessions uh, in the Big Ten. Uh, do you do anything different to kind of prepare for that this week, whether that's, you know, conditioning or different defensive approach? No, we, we watch it on film. We talk about it and put an emphasis on how it's important for us uh, from, you know, not, not being able to 
uh, well, I wouldn't say not be able to. I, let me correct myself. I would talk about, you know, how the emphasis on getting back in transition, uh, not taking any possessions off, uh, where uh, whether it's makes or miss, that we, we have to be sprinting and talking and try to make sure that we get matched up. Sometimes you're going to be cross-matched, but, you know, it's important that we get a guy uh, matched up on uh, one of their players because uh, they will make you pay if you don't. We'll move to uh, Alejandro with Michigan Insider. Uh, John, uh, Phil Martelli was talking yesterday about how he feels the team needs to have more of a consistent bench presence. Uh, what's it going to take uh, to have one of those players step up on a consistent basis? Oh, I trust they will. No, they've been, we, we have enough. We have plenty. And uh, our guys uh, are in tune to give them everything they can to uh, help play winning basketball to put us in position to be competitive. Coach, will move back with a follow-up from uh, Michael. Hey, Juwan, I think over the last five games, teams are shooting about 84% at the rim um, against Michigan's defense. And I was just curious, is the interior defense a concern or is that something that just statistically is a bit of an anomaly? Uh, well, Michael, I don't you know, see as far as 80% at the rim, uh, but you know, I'll take your position. And but I would say this: we want to definitely make you know, any time where a team is either driving or shooting the basketball from outside. That first, when it starts with driving, try to keeping our man in front and making sure that we don't not give up layups uh, and do it without fouling. And then, secondly, when it comes to outside shooting. Uh, we pride ourselves on making sure we get a handball contest and do that without fouling. Uh, but uh, any opponent you face in the Big Ten, you know they're not going to take it easy on you because this this conference is that damn good. Coach, we're going to slide over to Pat Ruff um, from the Post Bulletin. He has a couple questions about Will Cheddar. Yeah, Coach, what's the development of Will been like? Obviously, he's taken a redshirt year this year. Uh, how has his development gone in these months you've had it? Oh, it's been great, man. You know, Will is a, a culture guy uh, inside and outside. You know, his approach uh, with this attitude on willingness to improve um, comes in every day um, when we are, you know, whether we practice in uh, or where we don't have practice. Uh, you, you never have to worry about Will not coming in and getting in extra work. Um, he's also done an amazing job in the weight room of uh, staying in shape and working on his body and getting stronger. Um, his attitude has been phenomenal within the team, uh, whether it's in the locker room or whether it's in practice, uh, just being positive and also feeding life to guys that are on the court when he's not playing. Um, Will, uh, you know, when this time comes, um, I expect for him to be ready to come out there and compete. I trust that he's going to give it his all. Um, and then I also love the fact that, you know, I'm having an opportunity to have hands on with his development. And uh, I think, you know, Will is going to be the guy that at some point, you know, whether it's, I don't know if it's going to be next year or year after, but I can see Will becoming the captain at, for uh, University of Michigan because his entire makeup is built on uh, a Michigan man. And it starts you know, with his home, you know, and as far as his mom and dad did a phenomenal job uh, helping with this development um, as far as a, a person as well as an athlete. And you go back to, his, you know, Will's you know, background, you know, he did not only play basketball, but he also played football and uh, he threw the discus. I mean, this young man is, a, you know, a pure athlete, but also uh, a great competitor. One more thing, if I can, what made you decide to redshirt him, Juwan? My last question. Uh, because of the development piece. Uh, mm -hmm. I felt that it was it was great that we can have an extra year of developing him, as well as looking at the uh, our front line with some of the guys that were returning and also some of the guys that, uh, from, from a rotation standpoint, uh, did not want to waste in giving him limited minutes. And that would, of course, waste a, a year of development. I felt that it was important for him um, to get a, get a fewer 
a full four year experience here. Thank you. We'll slide back to Nick from the daily. Hi, Juwan. You briefly mentioned him at the end of the last game, but what has Austin Davis brought to your coaching staff this year? Excuse me? Austin Davis uh, work, working with uh, Sandman. Working with the team with Sanderson. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Sandman, it's a coaching staff. Let's have to clarify that. Um, Austin's been great, and he's been great, uh, you know, helping with uh, all the strength and conditioning part of it. You know, John Sandman can uh, Anderson well, Sanderson could, of course, share more in detail about his role. But from what I've seen, when times when I'm in a work, weight room and seeing how active he is and helping, you know, with correctives as well as with strength and conditioning, and then you know on the court, you know, it's been phenomenal and stepping in with uh, stretching and plyometrics and teaching that aspect of it as well. So. You know, I'm not surprised. You know, Austin is, you know, there's a lot of things that I mentioned about Will Tesk, Shedder, Shedder, sorry, I'm thinking about Teskey now, but I'm thinking about uh, Will Shedder. Um, everything is what Austin is all about, too. Uh, they're, they're very similar in a lot of ways. You know, I kind of joke with Austin a little bit this year about, you know, you, know, you could have came back an extra year. <laughs> He's always enjoyed that laughter as well. Uh, we'll slide over to Clayton Safey with the Wolverine. Coach, you guys are the top defensive rebounding team in the Big Ten. Um, I just wonder what you like about the improvement there. I know, um, you know, you talked about that as an area you wanted to improve uh, earlier on in the season. H have you liked what you've seen lately? Well, you know, uh, we're going to keep chopping the wood. And that's that means in all aspects of – whether it's defensive rebound, offensive rebounding, defense, um, any, any category within the defensive side of the ball, we're going to keep chopping the wood. And, you know, it, it's based on energy and effort. And, you know, I commend all our guys for just bringing it every day with energy and effort. And, uh, you know, I, I said it to you guys before early in the year that with this team, you know, they've been a good joy to coach. And they've all accepted of getting uncomfortable and then bought in to the culture. Coach, we have uh, one more. It's uh, Michael from the Free Press with uh, another follow-up. Hey, Juan, with, uh, with so many wings these days being able to play outside and inside, how challenging is it to defend those wing positions? And what are some of the keys to being a good defender against guys that can take you off the dribble but also play down low if they want to? Well, that's a part of basketball. <laughs> And basketball has evolved in, in, in so many areas where, you know, young men are not just uh, working on one part of their game, where they're just shooting outside threes. Uh, you know, you're getting guys that are working and doing a lot of, you know, training, whether it's in your building or outside your building in the off season on finding their development coach and, you know, d doing things within the cones, uh, taking, working on, you know, scoring off the dribble, different finishes and stuff like that. And, you know, I commend, you know, these young men today as far as, you know, what they have done as far as improving their skill set. Uh, but it, it poses a challenge for any opponent. Uh, we have young men on our team that's pretty elite level too uh, when it comes to inside and outside, uh, what they what they able to, to do out there on the floor and do some amazing things with that basketball. Uh, but it's just... Yeah, I think it's really done a great job of improving our game overall um, on seeing uh, all this special talent being displayed in college basketball.